Forget everything you thought you knew about reaction time. Forget practice. Forget skill. Because a YouTuber has just strapped electricity to his arm and built an honest-to-god aimbot that doesn't just tell him where to shoot, it forces his body to do it. We're talking bypassing human reflexes entirely. This isn't science fiction. This is happening right now in Counter-Strike 2, and it's about to change the game forever. For years, the razor-thin margins of competitive gaming have been defined by human limits. Milliseconds are the difference between victory and defeat. Careers are built on reaction speeds honed over thousands of hours. The esports world obsesses over input lag, monitor refresh rates, every tiny advantage to shave off those crucial milliseconds. So when the average human reaction time sits around 200 milliseconds and pros fight to get below 150, the idea of completely obliterating that human bottleneck. Well, that's been the stuff of dreams, and now, potentially, nightmares. Enter Nicholas, the brains behind the YouTube channel, basically homeless. Faced with the inevitable slowing of reflexes that comes with age, he didn't just accept it. He decided to engineer a solution, a way to level the playing field, or perhaps tilt it entirely. His creation? The neuromuscular aim assist. The concept is both ingenious and slightly terrifying. It works by feeding the live game feed of Counter-Strike 2 into a computer running a YOLO object detection model. This AI identifies enemy players in real time. Instead of just displaying that information on screen, however, it sends a signal to a Raspberry Pi, which then controls an EMS or TENS unit, those devices that deliver small electrical pulses. These pulses are directed to electrodes strategically placed on Nicholas's arm physically forcing his muscles to contract and move the mouse towards the detected enemy. In its most advanced form, it even automates the trigger pull. The journey wasn't smooth. Early prototypes suffered from lag. Nicholas's own reflexes fought against the forced movements. And let's be honest, getting electroshocked probably wasn't the most comfortable experience. But through relentless refinement, switching to a wired ethernet connection, upgrading hardware, using solid state relays for faster switching, and precisely targeting specific muscle groups, Nicholas managed to drastically reduce the system's latency. The result? Reaction times dipping below 100 milliseconds, consistently faster than even top-tier professional players. The gameplay footage speaks for itself, particularly with scoped weapons. The crosshair snaps onto targets with inhuman speed and precision. Now, it's not perfect. There were instances of false positives causing the aim to twitch towards teammates, and prolonged use is undoubtedly physically taxing. And while Nicholas's teammates seemed hesitant to call it outright cheating, even he acknowledges it sits in a gray area. The computer is making the targeting decisions, but it's still his physical body executing the movements. This isn't just about one YouTuber building a crazy gadget. This experiment by Basically Homeless forces us to confront some fundamental questions about the future of gaming and the very definition of skill. What happens when the limitations of human biology can be so readily bypassed? If a machine can react faster and more accurately than any human, where does human skill end and machine assistance begin? Think about the implications for competitive integrity. Most, if not all, competitive gaming leagues would almost certainly classify this as cheating due to the direct intervention of a machine in gameplay. It undermines the core principles of fair competition, where skill and practice are the defining factors. But the fact that teammates hesitated to label it as such is also telling. It's not a traditional software aimbot, it's a physical manipulation of the player's body. This blurs the lines in a way we haven't really seen before. Beyond the competitive aspect, this also raises questions about accessibility and the potential for future gaming interfaces. Could technology like this be used to assist players with disabilities? Could we see entirely new forms of human-computer interaction in gaming and beyond? While the current implementation is crude and likely impractical for widespread use, it serves as a powerful proof of concept demonstrating the potential for direct neural or neuromuscular interfaces in gaming. However, we also need to consider the ethical implications. Where do we draw the line? If players can augment their abilities with external devices that directly control their bodies, what does it mean to master a game? Does it devalue the years of dedication and practice that professional players invest? And what about the potential for misuse or even health risks associated with such technology? This experiment, while fascinating, opens a Pandora's box of questions that the gaming community and the industry will need to grapple with in the years to come. It's no longer just about improving our reflexes. It's about potentially replacing them with something faster, more precise, but ultimately less human. So, what do you think? Is this ingenuity pushing the boundaries of gaming? Or is it a step too far into the realm of unfair advantage? Would you consider this cheating? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We're really interested to hear your perspective on this. And if you found this breakdown thought-provoking and want to stay on top of the cutting edge of gaming tech and analysis, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot more to explore. Thanks for watching.